welcome back to the garage. Uh, we're out here today because I want to work on the Centurion mini computer. Uh, I have a lot of things that I hope we can get to today, but I have absolutely no idea how far we're going to get. I do know that the top priority for me right now is to clean this chassis up. It is disgusting. The terminals cleaned up and looked beautiful. So I am hopeful that this will clean up and look really nice as well. I mean, it, it probably looks pretty decent on the camera from there, uh, but up close, I can tell you it is filthy and gross. So uh, priority number one is to get this uh, big boy cleaned up. And then if we have time, I think I'm gonna try and recap some of the computer boards because uh, those boards had a lot of very old electrolytic capacitors on them and they should probably be replaced and I ordered some replacements for them so uh, hopefully we'll have enough time to get to that as well. Uh, anything beyond that? <laughs> I don't know I'm kind of playing it by ear here. So uh, well let's just go ahead and jump right into it. I'm gonna pull the vacuum out we're gonna get this thing clean. Actually, I think the best course of action is going to be to remove the wood panels off the front, remove this top panel here, and then maybe take it out to the hose and just hose it out. It is that gross. Uh, but, well, just sitting here talking about it, it's not gonna get it done, so let's get into it. All right, I've done a little bit of recapping. Uh, most of my recapping was done on the main computer boards, but I also replaced uh, two of the crusty looking caps that were on the power supply here. Uh, the rest of the caps looked okay, so I didn't want to do a blanket recap. Uh, we'll see, that may end up becoming necessary. Uh, but I wanted to give this thing a test and see if it actually outputs voltages. So I've got the harness that goes to the computer here. I used the back plane to figure out what wires go to what. So I've got the five volt rail and ground hooked up here and uh, they're feeding into my multimeter here, uh, which should tell us if we're getting any kind of voltages out of that. I also have a two ohm 100 watt resistor here that I can use as a load. Uh, so I wanna load down the five volt rail and see if anything gives up the ghost. But uh, I think initially I'm just gonna power it on 
with no load on it and see if it puts out any voltage. Um, I am very, very nervous about this, uh, but I've got a surge protector going on with a quick switch that I can flip it on and off. Uh, there's also a breaker on the back, so hopefully it'll all be okay. So first things first, I'll go ahead and turn our uh, power strip on here. There's now 120 volts coming into the power supply, but it is off because it's turned on and off by an external switch, and that external switch goes through the little connector J6 here. Um, so, uh, this, this may, oh, I can hear it. Oh man, that transformer is not quiet. Uh, but I can see here I've got 5.37 volts. So our five volt rail is putting out five volts. Let's see if we can check the 12 volt rail. Our 12 volt rail says it's putting out minus 12 volts. That's, uh, uh, actually that's accurate. That's totally accurate. Minus 12 volts is what it's supposed to be. This one up here is putting out plus 12 volts. So we have minus 12, plus 12, and plus five volts. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and turn it off. All right, so we'll go ahead and hook up a load to the five volt rail. Uh, this is our two ohm load here. And this should uh, put a two and a half amp load on the five volt circuit, which is something that it should be capable of. We'll go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. Yeah, there we go. We've got uh, 5.33 volts. It seems to be taking our two ohm load with no problems whatsoever. So I'm looking at the power board and everything looks totally normal. <laughs> Aside from the incredibly noisy transformer, uh, which probably is normal. I'm going to put the mic a little closer to the transformer. Maybe you guys can hear this. That's an insane amount of noise, but I would expect nothing less out of an industrial computer. <laughs> We're back out here in the garage and the chassis cleaned up really well. It did require me hauling the whole thing outside and spraying it down with a hose, uh, but I'm quite happy with how it cleaned up. It looks really nice. Uh, I'm also really happy with our power supply. Uh, the five volt rail was a little high at 5.3 volts, but there's an adjustment potentiometer on here so I can bring that down a little bit if I need to. Uh, but it all seemed to be working really well. The transformer was super noisy, but I think that's normal. And I am pretty confident in this thing. It looks like it's over-engineered beyond belief anyways, so I had a lot of faith in it to begin with. But uh, man, I'm, I'm ready to uh, put this thing back in the chassis. And uh, well, the chassis is sitting here completely bare, and I think it's time that we start loading things back into the chassis itself. So that's the next step. I wanna get the power supply hung back into the chassis because that's gonna make it a lot easier to deal with. This thing weighs a ton to move around. Uh, and I want to get the cage that holds the computer back in the chassis as well. I took it out and cleaned it. It seems to be looking pretty well. I also want to get the back plane mounted back into the cage. Uh, so we still have some work and we still got some daylight, so I'm going to get to it.
All right, so uh, <laughs> this is probably a terrible idea, but I've got all the boards back in. I've got everything plugged in the way it was before I took everything apart. And I've connected a cable from the MUX board all the way up to the Centurion terminal up here. Now this particular cable says uh, four port to Mayacom, but it also says in parentheses CRT. So I'm thinking that it might actually work. Uh, there's probably about a million things I should check before I do this, but I'm gonna send it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn the power on. And so let's do that. Let's turn the power, right. Totally forgot about that. The power switch needs a key and uh, I don't have the key. Well, I've been watching a lot of lock picking lawyer lately and uh, I think I can defeat that key. All right, so I've got the power off and I'm just gonna slide in the tensioner right here on the top of the keyway to hopefully give me just enough space to slip in the wave rake that I'm gonna use right below it. So I'll go ahead and apply tension here. We'll put the wave rake in, jiggle it around. Oh, we got a false set there. There we go. Look at that, we got it open. Oh, all right, now it, <laughs> it locks on the way back. Uh, so you have to pick it to turn it off as well. All right, uh, well, now we know that we can pick the power lock. So I'm going to go ahead and pick it just enough so that I can turn it on and off. Okay, so right there. Now the lock is picked, and if I rotate my tensioner, that should kick the power on, but the power should not be on at this point. So let's turn the terminal back on, flip the power switch on, and see what happens. All right, I've got my terminal on. Uh, I've got my uh, tensioner in the power switch so I can turn the computer on, and uh, <laughs> I think that's it. I genuinely have no clue what's about to happen, uh, but, well, here goes nothing. Well, nothing happened. <laughs> well, you can see that we've got uh, the address lights have come on, so there is something going on down here. Uh, they look like they're just full of junk. I don't know what F over here means. It does say run, but we, we get no displays on here. All right, let's go ahead and shut it off again right quick. All right, so nothing exploded, uh, but nothing happened either. We saw that our address stuff here kind of just came on with what looked like garbage, and then nothing happened after that, so clearly nothing was executing. I mean, I wasn't expecting a whole lot, because we don't have any drives in here at all, so that was not wholly unexpected, although I would be lying if I said I wasn't hoping for something to have shown up on the CRT here. All right, because I can't leave well enough alone, I spent pretty much all night thinking about this thing and trying to think about how I can see if there's anything actually going on inside. Uh, we plugged in the data terminal to one of the uh, multiplexer plugs down here and we didn't get anything. So I pulled out the scope and I decided to uh, probe these to see if there was any activity. Uh, and if we go through them, we get the, you know, that's um, plus five volts there. That's nothing, nothing. That uh, looks like minus 10 volts about there. Uh, we've got another plus 5 there. That one looks like a plus 10 there. No, that one looks like a minus 12. Uh, then we got nothing, and we got nothing. And so the multiplexer board is putting out some voltages, uh, but we're not seeing any activity. And so I was kind of curious if there was any way we could see if there was any activity on the machine altogether. And I noticed that right here on the edge of the CPU board is one of the ROM chips that we dumped. And so on a total lark, I decided to check one of the pins of the ROM chip and check it out. That is something. <laughs> All right, let's, um, let's change our volts per division here, get it up to about one volt per division. All right, so we're going uh, pretty much zero to five volts there. Um, and you know, that looks like activity to me. So let's see if we can do a freeze frame on it. And look at that. We can very clearly see transitions between high and low and they're uh, irregular. So there is some kind of data being output on this. Let's check a, a different pin here. 
Yeah, <laughs> look at that. There is actually code being executed on the CPU board. That is mega. I cannot tell you how exciting it is just to see uh, something like this. It means that this system is not totally dead. Uh, now we still have a long road to go because if we can't get the drives going, then uh, it is essentially a useless system. Uh, but something is happening and that gives us a starting point. This is epic. I am super excited about this. Just to see uh, this data right here off of a random line that I checked on that ROM chip. Just absolutely awesome. Oh man, that's so cool. So now that we know that we're not totally dead in the water, it's time to get started on the drives. Uh, but I think I'm going to save that one for the next episode because that's going to be a serious endeavor. Uh, so in the meantime, I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode.